Hello. Hello, Mr. Brand. Have you broken down? What's happening? Yes, my, my van's broken down right here in your driveway. Wow. I think they'd call that serendipity. The uh, etymology of the word serendipity is a, a carpet of fine cloth upon which we can walk to our destiny. I didn't understand a word you just said. Well, like, you know, typically I'll say... <laughs> I mean, if you could find some other occupation for the old facial orifice. Would you like to come into the back of my van? For my talk show, Metaphysical Milkshake, it's me, Rain Wilson. <laughs> now I'm interested. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to kill me, are you? We'll see. Take a sip from your soul On a metaphysical milkshake Hi, Russell Brand. Hello. Welcome to my van. Thank you for having me in your van. As you... May or may not know, this van is a transcendent van. Uh-huh. It can travel anywhere you'd like to go. Where would you like to go? Anywhere in the multiverse, Russell Brand. Ooh. Well, like, I can go forwards and backwards in time. Anything, anything. I can do the whole plot of Back to the Future if I feel like it. And then if I wanted, I could sort of just see, like, where I'll be in about an hour. That would be, like, sort of the most prosaic use of time travel to just to sort of see stuff that you'd know in an hour anyway. I'd like to see what's going to be happening in half an hour. Let's check that out. Huh. Yeah. Worth waiting for. Yeah. What are you doing these days? I'm going on a world tour. What are you going to do? Are you going to do comedy? Yeah, I'm doing a stand-up comedy tour about Che Guevara, Malcolm X, Gandhi and Jesus. The Them as icons, how they've been posthumously appropriated, what's amazing about them, what's flawed about them, how they're useful for us in this nihilistic landscape where there are no icons, in this perennial present where we're asked to believe one day in one vacuous form, where our food lacks nutrition, where our governments lack principles. What is it about greatness that we can cling to and how inconvenient it is that even great figures, when you look at them closely, did things that make you think, oh, don't do that, Gandhi. My son, who's a second grader, had to do a report on a famous person and he chose Gandhi. He said something in his report that Gandhi forgave his shooter. He said, you bastard, I forgive you. <laughs> he said that, I, I forgive you, I forgive you, oh, I love good. you and I forgive you, the man who had just shot him. That's a good turnaround, isn't it? To get shot by someone and they immediately forgive you. Could him. you do that? I'd still be very Let's much involved it. in being cross. <laughs> Forgive you. Let's pause for some refreshment. Would you like some tea? What type of tea did you get, mate? Earl Grey. It's piping hot, isn't it? Yeah. Crumpet. <laughs> Crumpet is. These are vegan. Now tell me about your veganism. What what's up with that? Well, it's lapsed. You you're a lapsed vegan? <laughs> because it's very hard to not eat an egg all of the time. I mean, I can mostly not eat an egg. I can mostly not eat milk, but sometimes. And what about honey? Honey, because the bees toil. You can't have honey when you're a vegan? It's hardcore. It's, it's... bee saliva. Is that all it even it is? It is. It's bee spit. It's like ve bees throw up in a hive and they're like, Bleh. What? Like, that's ardent. They're the Al Qaeda of the dietary world. But I support and endorse veganism in others and I'm really like trying. It's just I'm not there yet. That's good. What they find hard in, with vegan cooking is to make things congeal. Stuff don't want to congeal. Right. Without if it doesn't have eggs. eggs and butter and what are you going to congeal all that stuff? it with? Sputum. Right. Can you use animal sputum in vegan cooking? What I say is because it's a very absolute ideology, there's no room for, well, what if a monkey willingly gives up its effluvia? Can you use that in cooking? Mm -hmm. There's no there's no contingency for that. Where are you going to travel on your world tour? I'm going. Check this out. I'm coming all around America, all around Canada, all around my country, England, mm -hmm. all around Scotland, mm -hmm. Ireland, Wales, all of them countries, Europe. But I'm interested. I'm going to uh, I'm going to Istanbul. I'm going to Palestine. Going to Israel. I'm going to Folsom Prison. I'm going like a women's prison in England. Are you going to do a live in Folsom Prison comedy album? <laughs> It's going to be difficult to match up to Johnny Cash's yeah. <laughs> seminal work, but I'm going to try. Yeah, try it. Because like Johnny Cash, he's reaching right to their souls with yeah. that sort of growling, leathery masculinity. How are they going to cope when I... Right then, fellas, did you have nice showers? <laughs> <laughs> Here's my favourite yoga pose. <laughs> 
That was my <laughs> Russell Brand imitation. That was good. terrible. It was, it was terrible. It was a racist hate crime. What's the most profound spiritual experience you've ever had? There's this Swami, I know. He told me this story and I felt a weird feeling. In his temple in Bombay, a little girl come to him, she's about 10 years old. She was much looking forward to the birth of her mother's second child, who was to be her younger sister. When the child was born, she's paraplegic, uh, really, really deformed, disabled, etc. And uh, this little girl said to the uh, Swami, Radhanath Swami, I felt very frustrated and angry with God and angry with my mum and angry with my sister and annoyed that it wasn't my expectations were not met with this sister. It's not the sister that I wanted. But this 10-year-old girl goes on to say, but then I realised the only thing my sister understands is love. You can shout at her, she doesn't understand it. You get frustrated with her, you don't understand it. Anything else, you don't understand it. If you're loving towards her, she smiles. Mm -hmm. And while he was saying that bit, I was looking sort of at him and I looked at the trees and I felt like a sort of a frightening sense that, oh my God, like, like I needed to hold on to something. You know, like the realization mm. that this is only a very temporary thing, that mm -hmm. the only thing that matters to any of us is love, that everything, that underscoring everything is love. You know, if, it, if it's a biological, anatomical human condition, the idea of acquisition and survival of the species, then that 2% that distinguishes us from the great ape, somewhere within that is that divine spark that philosophers have always espoused upon and written about, that somewhere within that, that's the truth that we're trying to head towards. He, he conveyed it very well for me in that story, not least because it was being told by a Swami from the perspective of a child. I mean, how much more do you want to magnify the signifiers? <laughs> <laughs> Let's do some life's big questions with Russell Brand. <laughs> <laughs> what does happiness smell and taste like? The primal urge is the one that comes first to mind. Are you selfish? Yeah. How? Because I have to really negotiate with myself to not be selfish, like uh, like that, and that's my my tendency is to. Pro I really have to. It's like a revelation. It's a relentless epiphany that there are other people. I mean, like I'll give you an example yeah. of selfishness. When you yes. said my son did a project saying how to pick a hero, I was like, it was me. Like you know, before and when you said Gandhi, I was like, <laughs> that's not as good. <laughs> that's where my mind is, goes to and is. So I have to work quite hard to not get sort of lost in narcissism. I, don't, I try not to behave selfishly because I know it's a very, very unfulfilling way to behave. The Baha'i spiritual teacher, Abdul Baha, when asked what Satan was, responded by saying, the insistent self. How's your insistent self? He's pretty good, fucking good at negotiating. <laughs> He's pretty good at getting what he wants. What do you worship? When I'm meditating or praying, I, I say the infinite creative force that brings into being uh, all phenomena and guides all life, I say, can you move through me? Mm -hmm. Like You don't have to generate God, you don't have to generate uh, beauty or tranquility or serenity. So that God energy flows through you, kind of One would hope. putting aside the insistent self. To be able to reach altruism, like to be able to overcome that, because it's hard to overcome, because there are biological imperatives to p eat first before you feed someone else, to fuck We're 98% monkeys, so self-preservation and propagating <clears throat> the species, comfort, all of these things certainly we want to take care of. They're not necessarily bad things. They're bad things when carried to an extreme. They're bad in extremists. Mm -hmm. In moderation. A bit of sex. A little yeah. bit of a cake. Some muffins. But like, in extreme, fucking a cake. <laughs> fucking cake! <laughs> cake fucking, yeah. constantly. That's not what Jesus wants. <laughs> no one wants that. No one wants a community of people. <laughs> <laughs> fucking cakes. <laughs> what emotions are you afraid of? Love. Why is that? Well, because like, once you love someone, well, like, that's worrying, isn't it? That's like getting your kidneys and liver and everything and mm -hmm. putting it onto this tray and mm -hmm. going, just, would you mind? I'm going to be doing other stuff. What are you doing? That's my kidneys. <laughs> I need that <laughs> to process urine. I can love strangers, no problem. I mm. love strangers. I like, like love humanity ubiquitously and without problems. Mm -hmm. But an individual, so you're, talking about, you're talking about intimacy, really. Am I? I think so, because it's a, it's a different kind of love, isn't it? I don't know. A partnership? I assume partnership, a partnership, yeah, because, you know, I suppose like, there's a degree of trust required in love, isn't there, that can be quite challenging. I've decided with my wife, we, we still fight sometimes, and it's, we've been together 22 years, and I've just decided, like, you know what, unconditional love. I'm huh. just going to love her. 
I'm just gonna like put aside all that stuff. It's just gonna be just like a like a Niagara Falls of love towards Bloody her. Hell. That's what I'm gonna do. How's it going? I, it's I just decided that today. I told her on the phone on the way here. You just done it today? Yeah. What have you been doing up to the last three two we years? We were fighting like <laughs> cats and dogs. Get my dinner, you stupid cow! <laughs> Actually, I'm gonna try this Niagara Falls of Love. I said Niagara Falls of Love! That's, it could be equally dangerous. <laughs> She'd better get herself in a barrel. Russell Brand talked about his most terrifying emotion being love. So YouTubers, so pancakers, lovers all. What emotion terrifies you above all others? This is a chance for you to spill your guts, to open up your heart and kidneys and internal organs and lay them before this YouTube audience in a new way that you've never been vulnerable before. What do you say to that, Russell? Yeah, I think that's a good thing to make people do. They're just casually watching something on the internet. Suddenly they've got to go on some coruscating journey of self-discovery. <laughs> Why do they call it an Eskimo kiss? Because I think Eskimos can't open their mouths because their saliva will freeze. Soul Pancake, subscribe!